What's up, guys? Funk with you. And it's time for the monthly wrap-up for the month of November. I'm going to talk about what I read this month and about what I'm looking forward to this upcoming month. I have some good things planned for the near future. First thing I want to talk about here, guys, is the fact that I'm about one and a half chapters away from finishing The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, which is a book that I've wanted to read for many years now, and I finally got around to it. This is actually my whole copy. It's the whole story. It's the trilogy in one. I didn't realize that this was just one book. Of course, modern day presses have it split into three books, the first third being The Fellowship of the Ring. But I'm glad I finally, finally got into this thing. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm looking forward to reviewing it. I don't understand a lot of the criticisms involved. Perhaps I will by the time I finish it, but I'm enjoying it quite a bit so far. Looking forward to reviewing it here in the near future. Andy and Alex, what's up? Next thing I want to talk about here is the fact that I found myself in a bit of a literary bind. What's happened to me, and and I didn't see it, I didn't realize it at first. Perhaps you can relate to this, but I am kind of in a grind now where I'm kind of forcing myself to read. And I've realized that I've been reading straight fiction for probably six months at least. And my fiction reading is coming to be tough. So it's time to change it up. From time to time, I have to change it up and I'll flip to nonfiction for a book, maybe two. That should get that out of the way for me. And I can go back into novel reading. Uh, But the same thing can happen with reading nonfiction with me. At the beginning of the year, I was on a nonfiction kick, and I couldn't figure out at one point why I wasn't enjoying the books I was working on, and the fact of the matter was that I needed to go back to fiction for a while. But anyway, I've got The Fellowship of the Ring nearly finished up. I have realized I'm in a bind because here are two books that I've attempted to read this month, and I'm on break from both. And I intend to finish both. Uh, Number one here is The Angel of Darkness by Caleb Carr, a sequel to The Alienist, a book that I read earlier this year. And I'm liking this a lot. The characters are among my favorite literary characters of all time. This is probably my favorite. It's either this or the Sherlock Holmes. I actually think it's this series that I like. And I really like a lot about this book, but I just can't take any more fiction right this minute. Uh, And the other one is Phantoms by Dean Koontz, which I think I'm going to like. From what I understand, there's a monster in this one that's similar to Pennywise in Stephen King's novel, It. And I want to figure out what's going on with this. A lot of people say that Stephen King actually stole Pennywise from this book or the idea for Pennywise. I'm 100 pages into it, and I don't know what's going on with the monster yet, Uh But yeah, I'm going to finish both those. I'd like to finish them both before the end of the year. I'd like to get 50 books completed before the end of the year. I'm on 46 right this minute. And by the way, my key here, I think, to getting through the fiction grind is by reading Michio Kaku's The Future of Humanity. Uh, That's what I started today. I started it today. I think I'm going to finish The Fellowship of the Ring this evening. Uh, after I eat, I'm going to sit down and finish that last chapter and a half. I've also got a discussion lined up, guys, for that book. Uh, Anyways, let's go to the comments here for a moment. Andy and Alex, I am currently reading the Power Mage trilogy, almost finished book one. I'm not sure what the Power Mage trilogy is, but I'm curious. Um, I'll have to go to Goodreads. Every time I do a wrap up here, I go to Goodreads afterward. I scroll through the comments and I look at everything that you guys mentioned. So feel free to drop me a recommendation down in the comments, guys. Let me get this banner up here. But yeah, I'm going to read Kaku's book, actually reading it by request. A viewer asked if I could review Kaku, a Kaku book, and I've never read Michio Kaku. He's a theoretical physicist. I've watched some of his online content, some of the interviews that he's done. He's a smart guy, and the future of humanity is going to be all about what our future might look like uh, when it comes to the point where we have to either leave the earth or go extinct. 
And he's already talking about uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy and another book called Star Maker. So I like the fact that Kaku was inspired by science fiction, which is what got him into the whole physics community. He's a, he's a physics professor in, at a school in New York. It might be New York Public College. I'm not really sure, but he's a smart guy. I'm looking forward to finally uh, finishing one of his books up. Uh, City of Bones, I have not read. I think I've heard of that one. I've seen the cover for it. I think it's a popular one, but I've not, I've not read it. My favorite nonfiction book, you know, that's going to be a hard one for me, one. I would probably have to take a look, go back and take a look at, at the nonfiction books I've read. I really like as far as a biography goes, maybe the best biography that I ever read was a book called um, Benjamin Franklin and American Life by Walter Isaacson. I actually want to read another one by Walter Isaacson called uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I also want to read his book on Einstein. He, does, he did this massive biography on Einstein. But as far as a biography goes, I would say Benjamin Franklin Amer and American Life is a great book. You know, something that's great about that book, um, I actually have Ben Franklin's autobiography here, and it's only like 90 or 100 pages. I want to read that soon. I have the Penguin Classic paperback version of that. Um, I forget where I, oh yeah, that's a great book. He was, a, he was a more colorful, colorful personality than what I expected when I read it. I'm thinking kind of maybe a dull look at him, but no, he was a very interesting person and a great scientist as well. He did a lot of different experiments and he was a great inventor as well. He invented the bifocal, he invented the lightning rod. I was surprised about everything that I learned. Uh, concerning Benjamin Franklin in that book. Stephen King stated writing it in 1981, I think Phantoms came after. You know, it may be that I've got the wrong book that, yeah, 1983. Maybe this must be the wrong book then. I, I'm not sure which Dean Kuntz book it is where people say that there's an antagonist in it that is basically taken from a Dean Kuntz book, as far as Pennywise goes. I'll have to look into that a little bit further. I thought it was Phantoms, and, we, and we're almost to the bad guy in Phantoms now. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing Phantoms. It's like maybe my 12th Dean Kuntz book. I'm looking forward to starting book one of the Dresden Files. I'm looking forward to reading book four of the Dresden Files soon. I'd like to read this next month. I, this year I started the Dresden Files uh, and I read three copies of it. Looked like I damaged my copy of Grave Peril there. I accidentally folded the cover. Um, but I like the Dresden Files. It's a great series. It's a great merger of detective fiction and epic high-end fantasy. And I'm only, I'm going to do a video on the Dresden Files and why I like it, but I'm not far enough in yet that I see the whole picture. So I'm probably going to read a couple more of the paperbacks before I proceed on with the Dresden Files. Um, by the way, I've noticed uh, an inspiration for the Dresden Files in The Lord of the Rings, and I'm picking up on things. I've recognized that the Wheel of Time series basically starts off with a scene that's very similar to a scene that's in this book. I can't imagine what I'm going to find in here as far as that inspiration goes by the time I finished it. Plus, the Dark Tower is mentioned over and over and over and over inside this book. Um, and there's also a lot of, I've not read any of the Shannara series by Terry Brooks, but I'm seeing stuff come out of this that Brooks took for the Shannara series, just that I know about. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover this big time and I'm going to do a lot of discussions about this in the near future on my channel. Let me look through some more comments here, guys. There's another YA novel that I've got to share with you that I finished this this month. You know, it's been a bad month for me reading books. Last month, I was really plowing through. I was thinking maybe I can get through more than 50 this year. And I ran into a bit of a rut there, which I'm going to get out of by reading a nonfiction book. Um, I didn't finish Phantoms. It's started 100 pages in. I'm about 300 pages into The Angel of Darkness. I've got to go back to it. I might as well mention it now. I read a YA novel this this year that was fantastic, or this month, I should say. 
Shiloh. And I also read The Queen of the Damned. We'll come to that. But this is a Newbery award-winning book. And I'm going to review this here very soon. I was so surprised by this book and how much I enjoyed it. You know, I read it when I was a kid, but I couldn't really remember anything concerning the plot. I just remembered it was about a dog and I remembered that I enjoyed it. I must have read it when I was about 10 years old. This is such a great story, Shiloh is. Uh, it was totally deserving of the Newbery Award. I think I've read three Newbery Award winning books this year, maybe only two. Uh, Number of the Stars I read a few months back, which was a Newbery Award winner. Um, but Shiloh was just fantastic. You know, any author would love to, to be able to put something like this together. On the length of a short novel, very lengthy short story, like everything is here. This should be a textbook for universities that teach you how to write and writing workshops. Shiloh is what they should take a look at. I thought that it was just as near to flawless as you can be with the antagonist being just right and the dog and everything. It was an emotionally good read. I highly recommend Shiloh. And when I do my review on it, one thing I'm going to focus on, guys, I, I think that people that generally wouldn't read, um, wouldn't read, People that generally would not read YA, I think, could really appreciate, appreciate Shiloh. I thought that it was just, I just can't imagine anyone reading that story and saying, oh, man, I really hated that one. It was boring and not very good. It was just great. It was a great book, and I highly recommend Shiloh. I'm going to do an extremely favorable review of it probably within about the next week. I just finished it not long ago. I listened to the audiobook and read the text simultaneously for this one which is something I do now. I actually discovered audiobooks earlier this year. The first one I listened to was a book that I had started, The Clan of the Cave Bear. I started this, read about 250 pages, and I said, you know what, I'm going to give audiobooks another try, just out of the blue, because I had tried them in the past. I didn't realize you could speed the narrator's voice up on those things, and it was always so hard for me to do an audiobook because my mind would wander, you know, when you're when you're reading an, or when you're listening to an audiobook, you want it to go about the same speed that you would read, maybe just a little bit slower. If the if the author is narrating too slowly, like it is on the standard setting, usually it's hard for me to follow. But anyway, I started that in the paperback. And by the way, guys, if you're watching on Facebook, come over to the YouTube platform, search for Reading Funk on YouTube. I'm actually going to throw it down in the comments right now, the link for the channel. Come over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Actually, I'm going to have to get to it now. But anyway, what was I saying here? With Was it Shiloh? I lost my track there. Let's move on to The Queen of the Damned, which was a great book that I read. Here it is. I read it in paperback. And... I thought that it was the second best of the three Vampire Chronicles that I have read so far. Um, it was a good haunting book, and I want to go into the fourth installment, The Tale of the Body Thief, soon. I like the world that Rice has created here as far as these vampires and their personalities. I think it's just brilliant. It's one of the most brilliant things I've ever come across. And I also, it inspired me, to buy a very beat up copy of The Witching Hour by Ann Rice. Even a couple of the pages are loose in this thing. I got it for $2 at a used paper bo uh, paperback bookstore. And I'm looking forward to it because it's a horror series. It's an epic horror series that actually merges with the Vampire Chronicles. They come together. There are three massive novels in this Witching Hour. This is over a thousand pages, well over a thousand pages. Let me look here. Just over a thousand pages. Uh, it's a story about witches, and there are three such books. And then at some point, the Vampire Chronicles and the Witching, the, the Lives of the Mayfair Witches is what it's called. They come together, and there are novels like Blackwood Farm that where they're together in the book. It just, I just like the idea of that. An author having two epic series and they come together. So I'm looking forward to going on with a couple more of these, and then I'm going to go back in time 
and get the Mayfair Witches and read it all up to where it's all caught up together so that I can go forward with the merged series at that point. Um, I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm about to drop the link, unless it's not going to let me drop the link. Yeah, it is. I'm dropping the link in the chat, guys. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just click on the link that I dropped, and it will bring you to the YouTube platform. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'm going to hit a few more of these comments here. City of Bones I haven't read. A book where people snort gunpowder to get magical powers. That's interesting. Inferno uh, is a great book. I read Inferno earlier this year by Dan Brown, by the way, uh, one of the most successful authors in history. And I also, while I was reading Inferno, if I wasn't in a nest of wires here, I would grab these books. Um, I got Dante Alighieri's Inferno. Uh, I can't remember the actual whole title of that book, but I want to read it. Reading Inferno by Dan Brown uh, inspired me to want to read the original Inferno. That's a classic that I have to read and will soon. Hyperspace and Parallel Universe are both from Michio Kaku. Yeah, Kaku's great. Uh, you know what's interesting, guys? I don't know if you know this, but I'll tell you. On Google Books, you can um, you can actually take a look at the beginning of any book that they sell. And they sell not any book that you would want. What they allow you to do is look at about 50 pages, the first 40 to 80 pages of any book in ebook e form, right? You just scroll. And I actually went to the library today to pick up a copy of The Future of Humanity by Kaku. And it's closed today for the, for the Thanksgiving weekend. So I said, okay, I just have to deal with the audiobook then. But I'm actually listening to the audiobook on Libby and going through that Google, Google book preview now. Um, and it, there's like, it gives you a lot of pages on that. It's more than a few. It's more than a dozen. You can actually read like the first 25% of a book on that thing. Uh, it, allow, it allows you to look at them to see if you would be interested in buying. So for the next couple of days, I'm going to listen to the audiobook and go through that. Uh, and I'm going to pick the hardback up, which I've reserved at the library on Monday. So I think that future of humanity, you know, I like a lot of science fiction and I like nonfiction. And it's kind of like a combination is what the future of humanity is going to be, my Michio Kaku, um, for the reason that he's talking about what we're going to have to do in the far future to get off this planet and colonize the moon and colonize Mars and maybe even get out of our system here. And then the next step would be um, to get out of the galaxy. And then the next step would be to try to work our way into another universe because our universe is going to die, you see? So we might, it just sounds like it's gonna be good. It sounds like it's gonna be good. And I'm a real fan of looking back on history, the history of science fiction, and seeing some of history science fiction being today's science. I think that that's really interesting. Uh, yeah, but let me go on here and look at some more of these comments. What are your takes on... Okay, I just moved a bunch of books around in here. Let me grab a book. So what is my take on Khalid Hosseini? I have the kite runner here. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you've if you've heard of The Kite Runner. I re have been wanting to read this for a long time. I've heard that this is such a great book. I've heard that it's a phenomenal book. I've heard that it's an emotional journey, is this book. But, you know, I've just been juggling it in my to-be-read pile. And it's always, like, near the top. But I keep selecting around it. It's about time that I read one of his books. I picked this up at a library sale probably probably about a year ago, and I want to give him a try. So I'm looking forward to that, and I see it's got a pretty darn good rating on Goodreads. Let's see here. How good is the Kite Runner's rating on Goodreads? It's well over four. It's well over four. I'm going to pull it right up here, guys. The Kite Runner. Let's see. It's got to be like 4.2 at least. Anytime a book's like 4.2, 4.3, 4.3 even, the Kite Runner. So that's that's a significantly high rating on Goodreads. 52% of people that read it gave it a perfect five-star rating, which is pretty impressive. I expect that I'll read that book and read him probably maybe early this upcoming year for the first time. 
Dean Koontz. Yeah, I like Dean Koontz as well. You know, Dean Koontz is a guy that I've read some Dean Koontz books. For example, oh, I was mentioning about the first audio book that I ever listened to. Well, the first one that I listened to around half of the book was The Clan of the Cave Bear. I started it in paperback and I actually started the rest of it. I, I got the audio book and I listened to the rest of it on audio. It was the first time I ever did that. And I enjoyed it. Now I'm hooked on audiobooks where I want to not only get the audiobook, not only get uh, the paperback so that I can read it, um, or I f I'm finding myself, if I'm going to read an ebook, I want to get the ebook, the audiobook, and the paper bound cover for my collection, which is three purchases on one book, which is a little bit ridiculous. Um, but I just like. Listening to the author narrate for me while I follow along in the text. Um, I find if I listen to an audiobook only, there are some periods where maybe it's not as vivid as if I'm reading the book. But if I'm listening to and reading simultaneously, it's just as vivid. And it just seems to me like it's less work. I don't actually have to even focus on powering my brain to read the text. It's just being read to me. It's like two different experiences at once. The audiobook is something that's happening to me and reading the book is something that I'm committing to. So I just like the experience. And now I'm really filling my Audible account up with books because every damn book I come to, I want to both listen to it and read it simultaneously. Uh, the first audiobook that I listened to from the beginning to the end, the whole thing was Dean Kuntz's the Eyes of Darkness, which I did not care for, but it was popular in the media. I thought, you know what? I should read this and review it for my channel. It'll probably be a bit video that does pretty good because everyone's talking about this thing, um, predicting the coronavirus. And I read it. I listened to it in audio, and I also read the paperback copy that I had simultaneously. Didn't care for it. The The review did very well, though. It's one of the best, one of the most popular reviews I've ever done. You should check that out if you're curious about the, the Eyes of Darkness by Dean Kuntz. Predicting the coronavirus or not, check out either my review of the Eyes of Darkness by Dean Kuntz or another video I did uh, on the Eyes of Darkness and another book by Sylvia Brown called End of Days. People were saying those two books predicted the coronavirus. So I investigated the whole issue and did a video on it that's quite popular. All right, domestic psychological thriller book. I would immediately think The Silent Patient. That's what I would think on that one. A psychological thriller that I read about, about 10 or 12 years ago is this, The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. This book was one of the most suspenseful damn things that I've ever encountered. I was just shocked by it, but I made a classic mistake for me. What I did was I am, I was so impressed by this book, and it's got a good Goodreads rating as well. I think it's at least 4.2, that I immediately went into the second book of the trilogy. And I can never do that. I always run out of gas if I try to read books back to back. I knew that it would happen to me this year with the Dresden Files if I did that. I read book one. I wanted to read book two immediately, but I put one book in between them because I know that if I try to go back to back, it happened with A Game of Thrones. It's happened with a lot of books where I'll be so impressed by the first installment, I want to immediately read the second, but not a good idea. But what I'm getting out here, at here is this is a psychological thriller that I'm going back to this upcoming year in 2021 and throughout the, the period of the year, I'm going to read the whole trilogy of these things and figure out just what happens with Jason Bourne. I would recommend The Silent Patient though. That's one of the more uh, popular reviews that I've ever done. That was a very good suspense book with, a, with an ending that I felt I should have seen coming, but I did not see it coming. Robert Jordan said he wanted to start the Eye of the World to be similar to the Lord of the Rings, and it very much so is. Both of these start out like this. In the Lord of the Rings, toward the beginning, there's this scene when they're on a path. They're on their way with the ring, and I'm not going to give any spoilers here to anything, but there's this scene where some hooded riders are coming up from behind them, and they have to hide. These dark hooded riders are coming up on the horses. And I read half 
of the eye of the world. I read about the first 400 pages before I gave up on it. A book that I'm going back to this upcoming year. I'm going to read the whole series, but there is a scene very much so like that at the very beginning of the eye of the world. And I recognized those as being related. It's got to be true that Robert Jordan borrowed that from the Lord of the Rings. I read Desperately Seeking Shapeshifter by Jessica Sims. I've not heard of that. You know, I've never read Mary Higgins Clark either. I should probably try reading one of her books. She passed away some years ago, and uh, she was one of the most popular mystery writers, whodunit writers of all time. She wrote probably, who? how many books did she write? I'm going to look that fact up. She might have wrote over 100 of those damn things. How many books did Mary Higgins Clark write? Got to be 200. 200. Holy moly. <laughs> How in the world could a writer write 200 books? That must have been the only thing she ever did was write books. <laughs> 200 books. Wow. No wonder uh, she sold so many. She is really a prized author by many people. The Silhouette Shadows books. I've never heard of those. I was lucky enough to read The Hobbit and then The Lord of the Rings when I was 12. First taste of fantasy. Um, I want to read The Hobbit as well. I just covered The Hobbit in a top 10 best-selling books of all time video that I did. Uh, the Lord of the Rings was on there and The Hobbit was on there, which is a huge accomplishment coming from one author. Hey, Jamie, thanks for joining us uh, from Facebook. I read by... While My Pretty One Sleep by Mary Higgins Clark. It was good. And some of the silhouette books. Whoops. Is Kite Runner along the lines of Maze Runner? You know, I've heard of the book Maze Runner. I know that it's been popular as of, re of recent, but I don't really know anything about it. I'm going to look it up here and see what it's about. The Maze Runner. I know that like a lot of people were reading that just a couple of months ago. Yeah, I, I don't think that they're going to be similar. From what I understand, the Kite Runner is about this these kids. They live in Afghanistan. It's about a boy and his brother. I don't know. I read the first few pages of it on like a few different occasions while I was thinking about committing to it. And I can tell that there's kind of like a touching style to the prose and the narrative. But for whatever reason, I just wasn't ready for it at that time. And I've held it off. But I'm going to read it. I want to read more than one book by that author. He's been very successful. I only recently got back into reading after a very long hiatus from it. Sean Rogers. That's good. You know, somebody the other day left me a comment that I inspired him to start reading Stephen King after he hadn't read in many years. That was kind of uh, uh, an interesting comment. I really like comments like that where someone says that I inspired them to read a book that they really enjoyed. Hey, what's happening, guy? Mary Higgins Clark is one of my favorites right now. I've got to read one of her books. I wonder which one of hers is the most popular. You know, I want to read Agatha Christie too. She wrote a book and then there were none, which has been the best selling whodunit in the history of the world with over a hundred million sales. Um, I really want to read that one. You know what it reminds me of while I was investigating that book for my top 10 fiction books of all time, top uh, 10 best selling fiction books of all time. I, um, I briefly got a little bit of the plot. I was carefully avoiding spoilers, but it sounded like it was the inspiration for the game Clue. I don't know how true that is, but it's they seem very similar. If you've ever played Clue, I think that Mary Higgins Clark, uh, Mary Higgins Clark's book reminds me of that. And my thought just got shot off to the side. Here's a book called The Westing Game. It was a Newbery award-winning book. And when I was in seventh grade, I was supposed to read this book with the class. But for whatever reason, I didn't read it. I didn't read it. And this was my seventh grade reading teacher, Mrs. Wagnett's favorite book of all time, The Westing Game. She just loved this book. And you can actually tell by the cover that it's like kind of like Clue. Like you can see there's game pieces and money and stuff. It's chess pieces. Um, but this is kind of like a clue thing where some people are in a mansion, I think, and they start coming up missing and they're trying to figure out who who's the murderer in the mansion. I want to go back to this because I just feel like I cheated myself years ago when I didn't read it. And with it, I've never read a Newbery award-winning book, 
that wasn't just a phenomenal piece of literature. I read two of them already this year, at least. Uh, and I want to read that The Westing Game for sure. Which Mary Higgins Clark book was the best selling of all time? John Grisham isn't bad, I agree. Okay, so I'm not getting a definitive answer on that, but Clark has plenty to choose from. You know, that reminds me, speaking of Mary Higgins Clark, I won't really want to read Tammy Hogue. Let me know in the comments if anyone has heard. Uh, has read Tammy Hogue. She wrote a real popular one called Ashes to Ashes, and it was so good that she did a sequel to it called Dust to Dust, which are whodunits, I believe. Um, I always wondered if Ashes to Ashes was a case about arson or something, but I want to read Tammy Hogue as well. She really was a successful author with it. John Grisham is great, and I'll tell you a John Grisham recommendation that I have for anyone it's called The Painted House, and it's a non-legal thriller. It's like a southern drama about these families that live in this town, and they're all basically poor, and they live on these farms and stuff. And it was a refreshing break from legal thrillers by John Grisham called The Painted House. Very, very good book. Uh, it, the, the first book that I ever read that was an adult novel was one of two books. It was either Stephen King's Desperation or it was John Grisham's A Time to Kill. I can't remember which one of those came first. Liked them both, but I really was just engrossed by A Time to Kill. I like John Grisham. He's a great author. And like many of those legal thriller authors, he was a real attorney. He's a real attorney, right? But that the, A Painted House was just great. I was really surprised that he would write a legal thriller that was that touching a story. I thought it was uh, quite good. Quite good indeed. For the upcoming month, guys, I'm going to be reading, well, I've already started Michio Kaku's The Future of Humanity, which was a viewer request, as is The Fellowship of the Ring. Someone asked in the comments if I would read it. I'm going to be reviewing it here in the very, very near future. I have a chapter and a half to go, and I may finish it tonight or tomorrow. Um, I'm going to read The Future of Humanity and review it. I'm also going to be reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens with a group of people. I'm looking forward to reading that one and reviewing it. And someone's agreed to come on, on the program and talk with me about it. So it would be great to get into a literary discussion. I've never read Charles Dickens. I want to read A Tale of Two Cities, but I really just want to read A Christmas Carol. It's going to be a brief read. I have a copy of it over here. I'm going to listen to the audiobook and read the book simultaneously. Uh, but I looked at the audiobook and it's like an hour and 30 minutes. It's like a real, real quick read. You know, it's just a brief thing. And that will get Charles Dickens under my belt. I love reading classic literature. And that'll be an easy one. It'll be an easy notch toward my Goodreads goal as well. I'll probably just read it in one day. Um, but I want to read Charles Dickens. I also want to show you guys my classic book collection as well. It's not huge. But there's probably at least about 20 books in it. I think I'm going to do a video. In fact, I know I'm going to do a video in the near future where instead of getting my camera out and you guys look at the books, I'm just going to sit here. We'll go through each one of them and I'll talk about each one and why I want to read it and whatnot. I'm going to take you guys through my entire book collection that way. And this upcoming month, I may secure the last three pieces that I need for my Stephen King collection when I finally have a complete Stephen King collection. Plus, he's releasing one. It's set to release in maybe February of this upcoming year, maybe March, pretty early on in the year. Once I get that one and the other three that I'm missing, I'll do an updated My Stephen King Collection video where I have every single piece. Uh, of course, I'm also going to be doing a video here in the next couple days. It's going to be the top 10 Stephen King books that I want to read. And I may knock almost all of them out next year. It's going to include Cujo. It's going to include The Dead Zone. It's going to include The Stand. And I also have another video that I'm working on. I was just starting it this morning. My top 10 favorite Stephen King characters. I think that one's going to be a fun one uh, to go through. Back to the comments here. Your take on Hadley Chase. I've never heard the name. I don't know if that's an author or a book or a fictional character. I'll look at it, though. I always go to Goodreads after I do a monthly wrap-up like this. I will go to Goodreads and look through all the comments afterwards, and I'll look at everything that you guys recommend. So whether you're joining me for the live stream or afterward, 
Let me know any book recommendations you have for me down in the comments. I've been reading a lot of H.G. Wells lately. I really like his style of writing sci-fi. I want to read H.G. Wells. I read his A Time Machine, The Time Machine, earlier this year. Man, did I like that book. I thought that was such a brilliant piece of literature. I could almost do another video on how much I like that one, but I want to read his War of the Worlds, and I will soon. And I also want to read his Island of Dr. Moreau. I know I saw that movie when I was a kid. And I thought it was very interesting with the animals and the half human, half pigs and what was going on. I can't remember what was going on, but I want to read that novel uh, by him. I think that was him, H.G. Wells, The Island of Dr. Moreau. That was him. Uh, have you read If It Bleeds by Stephen King? I keep seeing it at the store, just haven't bought it yet. I have read If It Bleeds, and I did a review on it about a month ago or so. Very disappointed with If It Bleeds. It's a collection of four novellas, and that's a common thing for Stephen King. There are actually five or six of those available. I read one earlier this year, Four Past Midnight, that I thought was a very good collection of four novellas. If It Bleeds had four stories in it, two of which I thought were good. Mr. Harrigan's phone was one I thought was good. The Life of Chuck, I thought, was good. They weren't great, but they were good. If It Bleeds, the title novella, I did not care for it. It's a direct sequel to The Outsider, a book that made my top five worst Stephen King books video, uh, the most popular video I ever did. Check that one out. Uh, and there was another one in there. The last story was called Rat in that collection, and I thought it started very good. It had real potential, but I didn't like what happened in that one. I felt that it should have been longer. I thought he could have made a whole novel out of that idea in the rat, but if it bleeds, uh, just wasn't up to par as far as, um, I was concerned, but you'll have to check it out or you can check my review out. I give a spoiler free review on it. If you just scroll back a little bit. Read Piers Anthony. While I love the Zant series, his Incartations of Morality series is fantastic. Someone once recommended Incartations of Immorality series. Um, I have a book of his here. Where is my Piers Anthony book? I have a book of his here. It's very close to me. I, I don't see it, but um, yeah, there it is. Piers Anthony. Man from Mundania, a Xanth novel. I want to start the Xanth series out of order. I'm going to start it with this one, and then I'll go back to the beginning. I want to read that Incarnation, Incarnations uh, series by him, too. I've heard those are very inventive. There's one with Death, and Death is... He's got like a job that he's doing. Of course, I'm talking about the Grim Reaper and he has to go and collect souls and be on time to collect people's souls when they die and all this stuff. It sounds very adventurous, uh, but I've still yet to read a book by him. So I, I am going to be doing that soon. Which horror novel are simple to read? Any recommendations? I'll recommend one here for you. It's lengthy, but it's easy to read. It's called Nosferatu by Joe Hill. It's a merger of horror and fantasy and it's quite an imaginatively good book. Stephen King's son, Joe Hill, writes uh, quite a few novels. I read The Fireman by him, didn't like it. Horns, I thought, was good. Nosferatu was a great book. They're doing a, they already did a miniseries on it. I think that thing is still going, but very inventive antagonist in that one. I've never actually read a Stephen King book. What would you recommend to get into his stuff? If you're up for a book that's just a little bit on the longer side, I would recommend Duma Key. Duma Key is a great book. Um, it's quite a quite an interesting thing because it's one of the least known Stephen King books, but one of the absolute best. Duma Key is a great book. Wireman from Duma Key is going to make my top 10 Stephen King characters uh, video that I'm going to be doing uh, very shortly here. Duma Key is quite a great book with a very unique antagonist. I liked Persai in that book. Other than that, though, I would recommend Stephen King's Misery if you're not already spoiled on it by the movie. That's a great horror novel, very fast-paced kind of thing. I'm listening to Spinning Silver right now. It's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. I've been really into retellings this year. You know, there was a retelling that I started some years ago. For whatever reason, I couldn't finish it. I'm looking it up right now. Um, but I want to go back to it 
Uh oh. It's well, it's called Hyde. And what it is, it's a retelling of the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But it's just Hyde's story, you see. And it's very, I remember that I really liked it. And I think I lost it or something along the way while I was reading. It's why I couldn't finish it. I didn't not finish it because I wasn't enjoying it. But that's a good retelling of a classic. Hyde. I'm going to look for it here. Hold on. There's so many coming up. Let me see here. Hyde is such a good book. I like retellings a lot, and I've read some in my life. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it. But look for the book Hyde. Actually, I'll just Google it. Hyde novel, retelling. Hyde is quite a good... Uh, it's quite a, yeah, it's called Hyde by Daniel Levin. And it's a full-length novel. Of course, the, the original classic... The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was about 100 pages. It was very lengthy sh short story to shorter novella length, but Hyde is actually a full-length hardback novel. Misery is a great one. I can't say enough about how good that one is. Uh, that was just such a brilliant book. Stephen King did a great job generating suspense in such a limited setting with that book because much of the book takes place just in a bedroom, and I was really impressed as far as Stephen King keeping that pacing going in such that such a limited setting. I really applaud him for that. Misery is great. I think I will see if I can get that on audio. You should be able to get it on audio. I'm going to quickly run through what I read here just to recap, guys, and I'm going to shut it down. This was a somewhat uneventful month for me, only because I didn't finish a couple of the books that I had going because I'm in a rut with fiction. I will be coming out with my take um, on Michio Kaku's <clears throat> The Future of Humanity. That's the nonfiction book I've saw. I almost read Da Vinci by Walter Isaacson. I, I wanted to read a biography on a scientist. That would have been great. From what I understand, Da Vinci was such a smart guy. He knew almost everything that there was to be known, uh, according to cutting-edge science of the time. He was such a well-learned person, but... I ended up going with uh, Kaku's book basically because it was a recommendation. I read Shiloh, and I'm going to be doing the book review for it. I read that this month. Brilliant YA novel. One of the best damn books I've ever read. I also read The Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice. I gave it a three-star rating on Goodreads. Shiloh, I gave it a five-star rating. Uh, I'm going to give The Fellowship of the Ring probably a five-star rating. I'm very impressed by this thing. And you know something... And I'm going to cover this concept in an upcoming video, but I'm someone that's finished one epic fantasy series, the Dark Tower series. And I have some other ones started, right? I've got um, Stormlight Archive started. I'm in, in the Game of Thrones thing. I've read two books in that series. I'm in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. But I've decided I want to read The Lord of the Rings because if I'm going to get into this big time, this epic fantasy thing, I need to have that... Lord of the Rings under my belt so I can see the inspiration in other books. That's a very important thing. And I'm going to do, I'm not going to read it straight through, uh, but I do plan to finish the fellowship of the ring tomorrow, probably. And I'm going to read a few more books. And then I plan to go into the two towers. I don't want to allow months and months and months and months to pass by before I, um, get into it any further. Or, but I don't want months to go by and then I kind of forget about the Lord of the Rings. I want to make sure I commit to and finish it. And I think that that should be some pretty successful content because it's one of the most popular things. People love to look up book reviews on that thing. And I'm very surprised by how much I'm enjoying this. I honestly expected it to be a tough read, but I, it hasn't been for me. I'm enjoying it quite a, quite a good, quite a bit. I am legend. Um, that was one that I had in a recent video I did, top 10 horror books that I want to read and will soon. I want to read that. It's a vampire novel. From what I understand, it's an interesting vampire novel because the vampires aren't being turned into vampires. There's something to do with biological disease. I, it's some kind of unique thing. I just don't even know enough about it to, to comment about how the vampirism in that book actually works, but I'm interested in finding out. Where do you go to rate books? Can anyone do that? You're going to want to get an app on your phone or computer called Goodreads. Goodreads. It's a social network for readers, and it allows you to create a to-be-read pile and a red pile. 
and a currently reading or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's just the best thing for readers. It's the best app. Nosferatu was a great book. But anyway, guys, that was my reading wrap up. Kind of disappointed because I got into a grind here with fiction and I should have realized it and just read a nonfiction book to kind of alleviate that. But I started a bunch of books, The Angel of Darkness. I started Phantoms. I've got The Lord of the Rings going. And now I'm just kind of congested here. And I do plan on having Phantoms finished and the Angel of Darkness finished. I also want to do a summary walkthrough on the Angel of Darkness because I love that series so much. Uh, and I know that I'm going to throw The Gunslinger by Stephen King into my read here. I'm going to do a summary on that book. Um, so that's what's going to be coming out here in the near future, guys. And, you know, something I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start doing, like I am now with Michio Kaku's book, recommendations. I'm going to just take a comment that somebody le left me and I'll do a video and I'll show the comment. Uh, I've got a whole, whole thing. I'm going to start reviewing a lot of the books that you guys recommend. I'm going to step away from what I want to read every time and start taking some recommendations to, to kind of broaden my literary experience, so to speak. But anyway, anyway guys, uh, that was my wrap up for this month, uh, November, 2020. See you next time.